Hey, Daniel Clayman here, and I wanted to record a quick tutorial for you on how to calculate the after repair value of basically any property you come across. And I'm going to explain if you don't know what after repair value means, but more importantly, I'm going to show you why accurately calculating your after repair value is basically crucial to everything else you're going to do, whether you're wholesaling or whether you're buying deals yourself. And I'm going to show you how to do it quickly and I'm going to show you how to do it accurately. So why is this topic so important? First of all, an accurate after repair value is necessary for calculating a correct offer for any property that's going to require renovations. If you get the after repair value wrong, you're going to get everything else wrong. So let's look at an example. You calculate 70%, you calculate your offers based on 70% of after repair value. Right now in some markets, people are using 80%, even 85%. It, it really depends. I, I know investors in some markets that are still buying at 60% of ARV. So it really varies. But let's assume you're using 70% of after repair value to calculate your offers. So you assume that the after repair value is $300,000 and the property needs $50,000 in repairs. So you're going to offer $160,000. Right? We're using a very simplistic example. I'm ignoring holding costs, closing costs, financing costs. We're just taking our after repair value of $300,000, multiplying it by 70%, and then subtracting $50,000 in repairs from that. And that's how you arrive at your offer. So, but th the problem is the true after repair value is lower. It's 275,000. So your offer should have been 142.5. That means you overpaid. And if you're wholesaling, you may have a hard time selling that contract to another investor. And if you're buying the deal to renovate it yourself, you're going to have a lot less profit margin than you originally thought you would. Not good. Or let's assume that instead of $300,000, the true after repair value is actually higher. It's $330,000. So you could have offered up to one eighty one. dollars Again, we take three thirty. dollars Multiply it by 70% and subtract the repairs necessary. So what does that mean? It, you, in this market, in the competitive market like ours, likely you're going to get outbid for that property. You should have offered more. So everything starts with ARV. You need a way to calculate it accurately and preferably quickly because hopefully you're looking at a lot of potential leads. Wrong ARV equals wrong offer. So this is the basic process for determining your offer. First of all, you need to determine your exit strategy. You need to determine the exit strategy for the property you're looking at first because whether it's going to be a rental, whether it's going to be a flip, whether it's going to be a, a basic rehab to flip or a high-end rehab to flip. All of that will determine the kind of finishes that are going to go into the property and the kind of uh, renovations that you're going to do. But more importantly, you need to determine the condition of the property that it's going to be in when it's renovated. And you can use this for new construction also in order to find comparable sales, right? So if you're going to do a really nice high-end rehab, you need to be looking for comparable sales that have those same finishes. Then once you know exactly what your property will look like, what condition it's going to be in, the kind of renovations are going to go into it, whether it's going to be a rental or a flip, you're then going to pull comparable sales to match that after repair condition. Then you're going to sort and filter your comps to make sure that you're only using the most relevant comparable sales. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. From there, you determine the averages of those relevant comparable sales. Then you need to make some adjustments. And I'll show you that in a second as well. But maybe all of your comparable sales have garages, but your property will not have a garage. So you, make an, you need to make an adjustment to your after repair value because your property will not have a garage. So you need to adjust your after repair value down a little bit. So after that, you are going to compute your after repair value. Then you need to determine what your repairs are going to cost and then set your investment criteria. So set your investment criteria means are you going to use 70% of after repair value, 75%, 80? How much profit margin do you need? And then you compute your offer. So to accurately compute your ARV, you need accurate comparable sales. 
You need the ability to weed out only the most relevant comparable sales. And then you need at least some market knowledge to make adjustments for the special features that I just talked about. And I'll show you that in a second. But having some basic market knowledge of the local market where you're, you're going to be doing deals is important. So comparable sales criteria. You have to be looking at actual sales, properties that have actually sold. Ignore pending because you don't know. A property may be listed at $400,000, but it could be pending at three thirty. dollars So ignore pendings and ignore properties that are on the market because, again, a property might be listed for $400,000, but nobody wants to buy it for that price. Now, I have an asterisk here because I still like to look at what's on the market. It gives me a, an idea of what's going on in the market. If I have a house and I think it's gonna be, let's say, a really nice flip and I'm thinking of listing it for 400,000, I look on MLS or I look on Zillow or Truly, I look online and there's a lot of houses listed that are in the same, similar area, similar condition for $400,000 and they're not selling, I might rethink my listing price. So. It, you're looking for sold properties that are in the condition of your subject property once it's rehabbed or built. That means similar number of bedrooms, baths, square feet, finishes, and other features. And you want them to be as close to the subject property as possible, preferably no more than half a mile if you are in a really um, uh, tight uh, area um, density wise you may be looking at an even smaller radius if you're in a rural area you may be looking at the wider air radius it all depends and so when I say make adjustments here's what I mean this this comes from a standard uniform residential appraisal report this is the same process that an appraisal will use to go out and and make an appraisal of a property so here's your subject property column, and here's your comparable sale number one, comparable sale number two, comparable sale number three. And so you can see this is the adjustment column. So for, for example, let's look at the subject property has four bedrooms and three baths, and the comparable sale number one has four bedrooms and two and a half baths. So you're adding $2,500 in value to your after repair value because the comparable sale that you're using doesn't have that half a bathroom, right? So just as an example, but here having local market knowledge is important because it's gonna it's gonna give you a better idea of you know how much value does the market place on an extra half bathroom or an extra bedroom or a garage, and and that's really going to vary, right? If you are in a uh, warm climate, for example, the market will likely not place as much value on an attached garage as it will in a place that's very cold where being able to pull into your garage and keep your car out of the snow and being able to walk out of your car in a heated environment is going to be valued much higher right so just as an example so let's look at some examples i'm going to show you exactly how to do this quickly and accurately Okay, so we're going to log into our Rehab Valuator account. And what I'm going to show you is available in Rehab Valuator Premium. And we're going to click Start New Deal. And we're going to enter an address. This is actually a new construction house I recently put uh, on the market. And it's currently under contract. We're going to use that as our first example. And we just need to go in here and enter the address of the property. And we're going to click Save. And then I'm going to click on View Reports and all of my various marketing reports are available to me and I'm going to click on comps report. And what we have here is our software automatically pulls 25 of the most relevant comparable sales. And right now it's pulling them from Zillow and we're getting ready to add another data source here to complement Zillow for properties and, and states where maybe Zillow doesn't have as much information, but these are actual solds. This is actual sold data that we're pulling. Most people hear Zillow and they, they associate it with Zestimates and Zestimates are garbage. We ignore Zestimates. What we pull from Zillow are actual comparable sales. This is 100% accurate data. So we can map our comps and 
it's funny because uh, the property where we just put this house under contract, we have six houses going up here and there's probably 16 more on the two blocks where uh, this house is, but it's a pretty empty block right now. And so most of the action you can see is happening a couple of blocks away. But what we're going to do is this. Right now, these are my 25 comparable sales and it actually ranks them by quality score. That it, this is a a score that ranks these comparable sales based on how close to the subject property, how relevant are they, how similar are they. And so what we're going to do is this. First of all, I'm going to enter my square feet here for my property. And that's 1,808 square feet. And so if you look, this is a change that we made in the software very recently, a couple of days ago, actually. I have my selected comparable sales. These, this is the average sales price and average dollar per square foot and it automatically computes my after repair value. But what I need to do now is only select out of these 25 comparable sales, the most relevant comps that I want to use for my analysis. And so here's what I'm gonna do. First, I'm gonna sort them by size. And I want to exclude, I want to only include houses that are probably within 20% of square feet up or down. So I'm gonna go down to, I'm only gonna select the comps that are 1,500 to 2,100 square feet. And actually I'm probably not gonna go all the way to 2,100. I wanna really only select the closest comparable sales. And so pay attention to this number, pay attention to all of these numbers because as I start checking the relevant comps, all of these numbers change because now it's only giving me averages of the relevant comparable sales that I'm checking off here. So now I've selected only comparable sales that are similar size. I'm going to exclude, I'm going to sort these now based on bedrooms and I'm going to exclude any four bedroom houses. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort them by dollar per square foot. And the reason why I want to do this is because I want to exclude the low end. Because I know my market, I know that any houses here that sell for less than probably $170 a foot are not in the, in the same condition as my houses, right? So what I mean by that is typically here, if I know that if a house sells for $122 a foot, it's not new construction or it's not fully renovated. So I'm actually going to go ahead and exclude the bottom ones. And so now, here's, here's my average so far. What I want to do now is I want to sort these by distance. And again, I want to exclude the furthest ones. There's really nothing here more than half a mile away. But I'm going to exclude the ones that are over 0.3 miles away. And I'm actually going to go ahead and include this one because this one is still pretty close. So now I only have one, two, three, four, five comparable sales that are, are, I feel are the closest. And from here I can make adjustments. I can actually click on each one of these links and I can look at the finishes, right? This is, this is the listing, right? I can see, it looks like this was, let's scroll down. This was new construction. It's located just a few blocks from my house and it's almost identical. Three bedrooms, two and a half baths, 1,783 square feet instead of 1,808. I can look at the finishes and I can see it's got hardwood floors. It's got granite countertops. Very similar finishes to the house that I just put in the market. So this is a good comparable sale. I can go back to my comps report and I can do the same type of research for the rest of my comps to make sure that they are relevant. I can click on this one. Looks like this one was a rehab. It wasn't new construction. So let's look at the finishes here. It looks like they're showing, I mean, if This, these might be before pictures. That's very strange for them to include that. 
actually in the listing. So I can, I, I mean, th th this is not a very nice vanity. It's not a very nice tile chop. I can actually see that this is not a great comparable sale, right? The finishes here aren't nearly as nice in, in the new construction house that I'm putting in the market. So I'm actually going to go here and I'm going to exclude this one. So I'm going to leave those four comparable sales alone and I'm actually going to go here and I'm going to click include in presentation and now this pops up in my actual report that I can then use to either sell this deal as a wholesale deal or I can use this report as part of my funding presentation to go out and get private money in order to buy this property myself or, or a hard money loan or even a bank loan, right? And we have separate tutorials to talk about exactly how to do that. But this tells me that my after repair value is this. Now, again, I can go in and I can make some adjustments and I can say, well, my house is new construction, right? So uh, it's got it's got a couple of really nice features like gas heat, dual heat. It's got it's got a fenced in backyard, so I can add a few dollars up or a few dollars down to this. But this is roughly my after repair value. Now, what's interesting is that we ended up putting this house on the market for, and I can show you. Three hundred twenty-five thousand, and this is really fascinating, right? Because we put this house on the market for three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, and so you can see really nice finishes, right? Beautiful kitchen backsplashes, countertops, hardwood floors, a lot of attention to detail. But here's what's interesting: the software is telling me my after repair value is three seventeen, roughly. We put this house under a contract for three hundred twenty-five thousand minus about $8,000 in concessions, right? So I actually currently have it under contract that's set to close in the next week or so, and we're going to net right around $317,000. Pretty good, huh? And then again, from here, I can, I can go back and I would simply just enter $317,000 as my after repair value here in my analysis. And I'll say I'm going to sell it for $317,000 with 5% cost to sell. And I can do my analysis from here and then I can create a funding presentation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's look at one more example really quick. I'm going to go back to my deals. And let's start a new deal again. And we'll enter. This is actually one of my rental properties that has not been fully renovated. And I've been thinking about actually when my lease expires on with these tenants to do a really nice renovation here and resell it. So I'm going to enter my square feet, click save, and I'm going to click comps. Boom. Here's my 25 comparable sales instantly. I'm going to sort them first by size. And I only want to include houses that are within 20% up and down of my square feet. So I'm only going to include houses that are under 1,100 square feet because those are really the best comps. Let's go ahead and include this one since it's small. Next, I'm going to sort it by dollar per foot. And again, I'm going to get rid of the low ones because I know that these are in very rough shape. And what I'm trying to do is find comparable sales for houses like mine that are in fully renovated shape, right? Fully, fully redone and sold to owner occupants. So I'm gonna get rid of anything under probably $150 a foot because again, this is where having some market knowledge is incredibly important, right? Having some market knowledge here tells me that houses that are fully renovated are not gonna be selling under $150 a foot in this size here. So that leaves me with my five comps at the very top. None of them are more than half a mile away, so that's great, but I'm actually probably going to exclude this one because it's it's kind of far. And I know for a fact that 600 block here is, is a nicer block than where my house is. So I'm going to unselect this comp. And so here are my averages, $204 a foot, and that would place my after repair value at 182. Now, from here, I can, I can simply say, okay, am I happy with this number or do I need to make adjustments? My house is two bedrooms, one bath. 
this house here that sold for 218 a foot is three bedrooms, two baths. So, first of all, I don't know how they fit three bedrooms and two baths into 1,100 square feet. That's pretty tight. But I'm actually probably going to get rid of this comparable sale as well. Because it it's... I have a 2-1 and this is a 3-2. And so that leaves me with a 2-1. This is another 3-2. See, again, I don't know how they're squeezing three bedrooms and two baths into 960 square feet. I think that's incredibly aggressive. And if I pull up this comp, it's I'm going to be able to see, you know, the house looks very similar to mine. Nice finishes, but I mean, these have to be really tight, small, tiny bedrooms. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to take my after repair value. And if I'm using this comp, I'm going to adjust my after repair value down a little bit, maybe down to 170. And getting rid of this comp actually doesn't change the averages at all. So, so these are my comps. I can map. Now, when I map, I map all the comps. But these are the comps I've selected. I'm going to go click here, include in presentation. These are my three comparable sales. I can add some notes, right? You know, fully renovated fully renovated, etc. And I'm going to take this after repair value, including my adjustment down to 170, because I want to be conservative. When I'm estimating my ARV, I want to be conservative to some degree. And so I'm going to say my ARV here is 170. My ARV here is 170. And then I can do my analysis, right? If I think it's going to cost me $50,000 to renovate, the best place to go is here. Go to Quick Offer Calculator. After repair value is 170. I want to be at 70% of ARV with $50,000 in repair costs, closing costs, closing costs to sell, holding costs. This is the max that I could go and pay for this house. Or if I want to wholesale it, I want to add my wholesale fee here. This is my max offer. Now, in today's market, I, I may have to do better than 70%. I may have to be at 80% of ARV. This is my max offer here. And if you're in the software, we have detailed tutorials on how to do all of this. So use the quick offer calculator. Use the comparable tools, comparable sales tools that I just showed you. If you go into help, tutorials, we have detailed tutorials in every single step of the software all right so i'm going to leave you with this I, I love this quote by jim ron if you let your learning lead to knowledge you become a fool if you let your learning lead to action you become wealthy so watching these videos learning studying it's not enough it's not going to get you anywhere put what you're learning to work if you have the free version of the software use the free features what i just showed you with comparable sales is available in the premium version so you can go to rehabvaluator.com forward slash upgrade and start evaluating your deals accurately start saving time by pulling comparable sales quickly start doing the kind of filtering that i just showed you in order to arrive at an accurate after repair value and in addition obviously to what i just showed you you have full wholesale deal marketing, ability to create funding proposals for your private lenders, hard money lenders, banks, full project management suite inside the software that lets you create detailed rehab budgets, cost templates, scope of worksheets uh, for your contractors, keep track of your transactions and our in-app accounting, create real-time reporting, etc., etc. So don't just watch videos, don't just learn. Go out, find deals, use our software, to do deal analysis, deal marketing, project management, put all of this to work. Leave me any comments, questions, feedback below. And that's it. Thank you for watching.